Governors, you have a long-range perspective, and we can take advantage of that. How does New Jersey's economy, how do you assess it, Governor Florio, and, and how do we fare against our neighboring states right now? Well, New Jersey traditionally relied upon manufacturing labor-intensive jobs. The economy has changed, and New Jersey has changed. We're now much more involved with service-oriented jobs. They don't pay as much. I mean, I can remember when I went to automobile manufacturing facilities in uh, Linden, General Motors, pharmaceutical industry much, did more production here. Those things are gone. So we're going to have to figure out how we get some more high-value added jobs into New Jersey. Uh, the pharmaceutical experience we have is bringing biological types of um, pharmaceutical products to the fore. That's something we should encourage. Do you agree with that, Governor Whitman? And, and how do you see us and, and what we've become when you look at New York and Pennsylvania? How do we fare these days? Once a business leaves, it's much easier for them to make that decision to leave than it is to get somebody to come in. And I know that the government's been trying very hard to ensure that we have the right balance of incentives to bring companies in that will provide those good jobs, but it's, it's still a challenge. When you're a governor, where does this sit in your list of priorities, the things that you have to deal with? And, and is there really anything that a governor can actually do to bring about real change? Well, it was always very high on my list. I mean, that's really how I judged how we were doing. Were people able to find the kinds of jobs, that would find jobs to begin with, and the kind of jobs that would enable them to support their, their families? And that's why you want to make sure you are doing everything you can uh, to encourage business, to make it attractive for business. I never wanted a pool of money to try to, you know, give businesses to encourage them in because I figured there was never enough money in the world to do that. You'd run through it pretty fast. But there are other things you can do. Give businesses a place to go that will be their advocate to help them get through the regulatory climate and do everything that they need to do to get into the state um, to show them that you really do want them here. And, of course, a perennial problem that we have in New Jersey is the high property tax which goes directly to schools. And that's, that's the biggest frustration, I think, for governors because we always get lumbered with the property tax, but the state doesn't set the property tax and it doesn't collect it or spend it. However, there are things the state can do to help relieve the municipality of some, municipalities of some of their burdens, which will in turn help them to keep property taxes lower. But this has been a problem that has been gone going for decades now. There's an uh, interesting study that was conducted not too long ago one of these rankings of, uh, is your state business friendly? And New Jersey didn't do very well in terms of being business friendly. But what was interesting to me was traditionally we talk about property taxes, which was legitimate. We talk about utility costs being high. But this survey indicated that traffic congestion was another disincentive for businesses to think about coming here. And again, we all drive around. The traffic congestion is going to be not just disconcerting and uh, causing us aggravation, it's now impacting productivity. So investment into uh, infrastructure would be something that would help. So this cycle of, of ups and downs that the state's economy has, has been and continues to go through, does that encourage you that our future then will be bright uh, in terms of well, our the, economy? The, the, the traditional ups and downs, the cyclical nature thing, that has been something we always experienced. I think we're into something totally different. We're into a structural change by virtue of globalization, by virtue of the investments that we make in new types of technology. We're uh, in, into new territory. And I think uh, at the national level as well as at the state level, we have to have people who understand things are different now than they were in the past. We just can't have unemployment for somebody who will be out of work for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and they'll go back to the same job. Those jobs that the person loses for are gone. They have to create new industries and new jobs. So the times a are a changing. A oh, yeah. No, it's going to be a reinvention of the job market in our place, and we have to understand the competitive nature of anything that we do in a global environment, global economic environment. And that gets to education, and that gets to the need to invest in STEM education, the science, technology, engineering, and math, um, which is something where we don't do well as a nation. I mean, New Jersey is doing all right, but um, we don't do what we need to do in those fields to, in order to give our young people particularly the skills they need to be competitive in this new global environment. And we do need to expose them to the rest of the world as well to understand that, that you know, we don't live in an island. Uh, we can't survive that way. And no man is an island, no country is an island these days. 
and it is a, t a very different economic uh, setup, really, that, from what we've seen before. Many challenges lie ahead. Governor Whitman and Governor Florio, thank you very much for sharing your perspectives. My pleasure.